at the top there, I've got a single five-syllable rhythm. Okay. That's it. Yep. Now, I teach this. This is really important, really, really important. Notation is not our friend. Uh, I, I call notation the curse of the modern musician <laughs> because we're, we're so used to reading scores. We start yeah. to think in terms of scores. Yes. And we actually forget that the notation does not capture the rhythm. Uh, meter is one thing. Meter is, is a way of notating, and you have to notate, so it's a skill. But any rhythm can be notated in any time signature. The time signature does not determine the rhythm. So I, this is how I teach it. I say, for instance, let's take a five-step rhythm, like a dance with five steps, or a five-syllable rhythm. So it's a verse, a poem, with five syllables, yum, dum, 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 one, two, three, four, five. So I say to the, the students, one, two, three, four, five, can you make a rhythm? So Nikhil, putting you on the spot now, can oh, you no. make a rhythm of one, two, three, four, five? Um, Any rhythm. One, uh, with with five beats or with five? Just, it doesn't matter, don't think of beats. It's just one, two, three, four, five. How can you put those five things in an order that makes a rhythm? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, that's a rhythm. Right. Or one, two, three, four, five. 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 You get the idea. Right. We can do hundreds of these. So I get the students to think in terms of rhythm. It doesn't matter how this is notated. And the curse of notation is the bar line. You know, the yes. bar line. Because everybody thinks it means a strong beat. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't. It's just a means of notation. So you've got to think of the rhythm in terms of a freedom of rhythm. So here we go. Listen to what I do now. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Did you hear what I did? Right, right. You so stretched the rhythm it can, out. It can double. It can double, halve. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you can mess around with it. So I could, for instance, do one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Wow. And that's exactly how 18th century music works. It doesn't matter how it's notated. It's If it's notated, it's very difficult to see that. But if you do it without did that, notation, did it's Did that easy. insight come from solfeggio? And, and or, is that in a source or did you just, was it obvious after studying it's obvious solfeggio. from solfeggi it's okay. it's just how the music works if you try and describe it in terms of meter um like many modern textbooks do and you you talk about bar lines and strong beats and metrical rhythm and so on right. it's really complicated of course you can describe it like that but it's no good for improvisation it's useless in fact for improvisation right. what's useful for improvisation is what i've just done you, you could now turn that five syllables. So if we now apply it to our theme, continuation and cadence, look what I've got on the, on the uh, board here. It says, fa, 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 mi, fa, la, sol, sol, fa, mi. Yep, yeah. two rhythms. Then I double, la, sol, sol, fa, mi, quicken, la, sol, sol, fa, mi, re, mi, re, mi, re, to repeat the cadence. Yeah. So, uh, generally speaking, the phrases in 18th century music are symmetrical, but they quicken at the end to give momentum. Yeah. So what you'll normally have is not do, re, mi, re, do, which is really boring. You'll have yeah. do, re, mi, re, do. They'll normally do that. Yeah. So here, fa, 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 mi, fa, la, sol, sol, fa, mi, la, sol, sol, fa, mi, la, sol, sol, fa, mi, re, mi, re. Mi, re, mi, re, mi, re. And we've got something approximating 18th century music. Right. And it's done, I go, I go through lots of exercises with students, trying different rhythms, different cadences. If we go down now, you'll see this is a real rhythm, and it's a very clever one. Ready? Fa, 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 mi, fa, la, sol, sol, fa, mi, la, sol, fa, mi, re. Now, can you see at that point, the rhythm's been destroyed. This is really funny. This is Mozart being silly, as usual. This is a sonata for Enfänger, for beginners. It has nothing to do with how easy it is for your hands. It means for Enfänger, for beginners, because it's an easy improvisational lesson. So the maestro says to you, play a theme, fa, mi, fa. So you sing, fa, mi, fa. La, sol, sol, fa, mi. 
And then he says, remember those syllables. La, sol, fa, mi. So the maestro sort of says, la, sol, fa, mi, you will remember this. But because it's done so quickly, la, sorry, because it's so slow, you lose the rhythm. So yeah. we've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Is that five? It sounds like a one to me now. Yeah. Ah, listen to what happens next. La, sol, fa, mi, re, mi, re, mi, re. <laughs> it goes la, sol, fa, mi, re. La, sol, fa, mi, re, mi, re, mi, re. So let's do the whole thing. Fa, 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 mi, fa, la, sol, sol, fa, mi, la, sol, fa, mi, re, la, sol, fa, mi, re, mi, re, mi, re. And what Mozart does is he goes from a five syllable uh, voice rhythm, that's a vocal rhythm, a singing rhythm, to a march rhythm, a four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which is right. instrumental music. And he does that by lengthening the syllables until you lose all sense of, of, of the rhythm. Then he brings you in with it, it's fantastic. And then the second theme, in case you're interested, goes back to the five syllables. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. You hear it? It's the same five syllables. So okay. Mozart there uses rhythm uh, with a very simple pitch structure. 